Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, at any time when we are seeing us. Oh, welcome to another episode of Brown Talks, and um, it's been an awesome ride to January to this time, and you know, you know, most times, I think all the time we have to take a break, yeah, yeah come back, yeah. and then, you know, it, it will not, it will not be fine if you, you are, you are giving out and then you're not taking it yeah. back. So you're welcome once again, not especially to this episode because I feel this episode is really special. I don't have to agree with it. Alright, so I have my course here and um, I wish to bring it to the Yeah, welcome once again to this show. My name is Omo Evelyn Piyari. Wow, okay, so my name is Evelyn Olani. You're welcome once again. So, uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about something interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. Yeah, going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to be looking at the topic, learners have choices. Learners have choices. And when we say learners, we mean students. Yeah. We mean students. Yeah. Because we all are learners, actually. Yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah. yeah, because teachers too are learners. So today we are looking majorly at the students. Students have choices. So, um, I think you should... Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, like my colleague has said that learners have choice. And we are going to be talking about um, the pathway at which learners can make choice, right? Yeah. All right. So our first question is, why should learners choose a path for themselves? Why should they be the one to decide what they want to do, how they want to go about it? Um, this is what I want to be, you know? Growing up, so we have some learners that will say, okay, I want to become a doctor, mm-hmm. I want to become a lawyer, yeah. I want to become this, I want to become that. So why should they be the ones to choose for themselves? And you know that as time goes by, this um, this institution changes like, okay, I don't want to become a doctor, I want to become something else. Mm-hmm. Why does it change? Why do they have to choose it for by themselves? Why do they have to choose for themselves? I, I think before you go on with answering that, I actually think that, uh, you know, learners have and every children has time that they, they have passion for something and then maybe at a point it shifts. This, at, at, you, at a younger age, I feel like their passion are not really being really tested. Yeah, because they have little information. Oh, that's true. And another thing that actually affects that, I mean, what you said concerning one time you might want to be a doctor yeah. and the other time you might want to be a lawyer, is the fact that probably there is a trait of doctor in them and it wasn't from them. Exactly. So if, if, if you have a learner that, uh, that wants to be a writer and the person has writing and then you just show the on the person when the person writes. The kind of that learner tend to lose interest in what they are going for. So I believe uh, that that's the one reason. And then to answer the question why learners have to make choices is because mm-hmm. all these learners, every of your students, teachers, parents, your children at home, they have passion. Exactly. They have interest. Mm-hmm. They want to they want to explore. Mm-hmm. They have things they like, they have things they don't. And you know, when they have this interest and they have this passion mm-hmm. for something, it is our duty as parents, as teachers, to make those things grow. Exactly. You know, it, it is like you're planting a tree. You know, it's like you're planting a seed or you're planting a tree, mm-hmm. and then you need it to grow. You know, it it brings out the branches and then the fruit. Mm-hmm. So all these things also are things that their passions, their interests, are things that you need to really, really work on. You get, okay. yeah. yeah, because they have choices. They want to choose their path. They want to choose their career. But I want, I want to. I, Maybe you have something to say concerning that. Um, yes, I, I actually do. You know, all of the children, they know where they belong. Mm-hmm. They know that, okay, this is what I can do. This is what I cannot do. And as parents, sometimes we try to impose on them that, okay, you should do this, you should do that. But okay. when they don't really even want to do it, for someone like me when I was growing up, mathematics was not just my thing at all. I think that's mm-hmm. actually for everybody. <laughs> yes, it's also my thing because my, well, my dad would be like, Okay, you must learn it. My, even though my dad, my dad was not this kind of imposing parent, but my teacher is like, you have to be in science. You are very brilliant. You have to learn mathematics. I was like, sir, I don't like this mathematics. Let me just go to my class. And it was just like, I'm trying to battle with my teacher choosing for me and I choosing for myself. But I, I am so glad that I did went to my own choice. So most times we know where we are. We know what we can do. But from pushing us that, okay, you can uh, go and do this, go and do that. I know that this is 
what even if they wake me up in the middle in the middle of the night i know that this is what i can do so i just feel that we should allow these children these learners to choose for themselves these students to choose because they know it they, whether we like it or yes they know it they have passion they have life they have this life so that all you are doing to them is their dislike and you are trying to tell them that oh you you can't do this this is too small for you and whereas they can make something big out of what you are saying it is too small so we should allow them to choose for themselves. Yeah, I, I think you actually have a similar story. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Everybody because at the point in my life when I was you know, you know says one you when you want to when you want to start choosing science class, art class yeah. or commercial the one you want to be. My school then you have to do the whole course. No, at the point I feel like it probably was good, you know it where you like uh-huh. your life and maybe uh-huh. your life. Right. But I it, it goes to the point that at the end of that first term of um, when we had our science class, mm-hmm. art class, commercial subjects all together, we we now I, I think I start a class that into our class and start calling people names and mm-hmm. telling them you have to be in art class because you right. did well in the art mm-hmm. and exam, you have to be in science class because and that's why I ended up in science class and seriously I wanted to be in art. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it it is it, it, it actually it, it's actually important that mm-hmm. not even like like it, it's actually important for us to allow the students to make their choices. Yeah. Well, okay, but, but then looking at it, but in this kind of situation, do we now say that uh, the role of mentor or teachers are not absolutely important? Absolutely no. You cannot erase the role of mentor because sometimes, some way, one way or the other, teachers influence it. We know sometimes this, we, we, we as a children or as a learner, students, our, we are myopic, we are some things that we need to learn. We are short sighted because mm-hmm. we cannot see from afar. But these teachers, they have gone ahead, they have seen yeah. things. So, them coming, sometimes we don't have to. Mm-hmm. Yes, sometimes some children don't have to because they tend to follow friends. Because my friend is going to science class, well, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> that was the case of my most of my, my colleagues then back in secondary school. Most of because all my friends they went to science class and they were dragging me like, Oh, everybody's going to science class, they want to be in art class, they want to be this. I said, I am going to art class. So I'm not for friends, but not everybody has that choice to make. Yeah. So teachers, we are not erasing the role of the teacher, but we are just telling the teacher that allow this learner to make their choices, mm-hmm. allow them to choose. They can choose. Yeah. But then you can be a guiding um, guiding one for them. Yeah. Just okay. This is how to do this, this how to do. okay, I want to become this. Okay, why can't you do it like this? Just shape them to become better. Okay. You, you, you get but we're not totally saying that okay, this thing because if you are actually allowing these learners to make choices, you are training them to become an independent um citizen of a of a of a nation because it it brings out their responsibility that okay, I am responsible for myself because I can choose. You know, when you choose you become responsible for yourself. With any consequence that comes out of your choice, yeah, yeah, you are yeah. able to take it that okay, I am the one that made this choice. So I, I can take responsibility. So it's just them to become responsible. But the rest of the role of a mentor, we are not saying that. Yeah. Okay, so I don't if you have an um, addition you can feel happy. Yeah. Okay, I feel like also, you know, in most of our schools, um it's it's always like uh, teachers are just teachers and there is no role of a mentor. So I want to also chip in this that teachers are not God, you get. Teachers are not God. Mm-hmm. So it shouldn't just be that you come to class, you teach your learners then. You, in, 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 teaching is not just about, um, I have to take them time in uh-huh. English mm-hmm. and then we go. It is about impact. So I, I think also that, uh, you know, there should be a place whereby teachers are mentors too. Mm-hmm. Teachers are mentors. You you are guiding them. You're putting them through in the way they should go. How will they have to? Okay, you like science. What can you do in science? You get. So please, I I I, I actually love the, the part that you said that um when your friends were telling you to move your life, you don't want to move. That's yeah. because you feel like and you know this is just where you yeah. want to be. Yeah. So teachers, you also are mentors. So there is no, there is no like you have to, you have to stop ordering their cell or stop making them go in the right path. 
So your role is not exempted. Exactly. Even when they are chosen, try to know what their choices are based on. Exactly. Try to know why they are chosen. The point of all these things is just that learners have their choices. And then the role of teachers and mentors are not exempted. Yeah. Everyone was that important. You you will even find out that you have to even learn something from this church in your passion. My time will be time to talk to them because learners are so they are beautiful souls are <laughs> they are so very intelligent. And um okay, I also feel that you know, we don't just grow into making choices. Mm-hmm. You know, it's from a place of beauty. Wow. I feel that uh, most people we are uh, autonomous in our decision making when it comes to teaching our learners. Yes, we are autonomous. Like we make decisions and just present to them and this is what we are going to do. Why don't you just bring the idea to your class or to your session? And okay, hey guys, what can we do about this? How do we do about this? And you'll be so so amazing with all the responses that are going to be getting because if you, you you will be you will be astonished and you'll be like, wow, really? So these people have all of this in mind. I believe that from there you are including them into the choices of okay, you can decide. For this plan, so you can decide for the test. Mm-hmm. It gives them feel that okay, okay, I can, I can do something. I can say something. I have this, um, 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 this ability to choose even for with my teachers and my colleagues. So I feel that choices come from there. Mm-hmm. So I think our teachers, we are saying that teachers are not just teachers alone. You are also a mentor. Yeah, you are also a mentor. So you should mentor these all of these things when you see them in your learners. You should mentor them to the right path. Not like no, because this one is good in mathematics. What about the part that maybe he doesn't really even like the mathematics? Just screen it because it's a prerequisite. You know, mm-hmm. mathematics is a prerequisite for you to yeah. pass promote to another um, class. If you don't pass it, you can't promote. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I so much love that. Yes. You, you know that so. Um, all of these things, the AC boys down down to learners, these learners have their passion, mm-hmm. they have their life, they have their mm-hmm. life, yes. and we should allow them to choose. We should allow them to choose because that brings out the, the best out of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. That's so nice. Thank you. Because it makes me so. The way you're talking, I was just remembering some event that happened with my learners and hi and so <laughs> every people were okay, 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 okay. So I, I feel like we should also throw like also look at what are the similar questions that um that can come up when when a child is trying to make a choice or when you are trying to put them in the right way mm-hmm. as an educator. What are the similar questions that you can ask them? Okay. Yeah. Before you know, you get what I'm saying. Before yeah. they try, so we should just. I think we should just talk about that. Uh huh. All right. So um, I feel that you know, as a mentor, you should have if not time with your learner. Not it might not be combined. Mm-hmm. Might just have to. Okay, you, you, you. You are staying together during break. You are just going to spare me, and it's not like you are taking over their break. You are going to spare me some time during your brief session you want to have dialogue. Then from there, you can okay, you can ask them, what do you like to learn? I think that is my own thing that should come of what what do you like to learn? You know like um what do you want to teach you? But what do you like to learn? Because and it was so amazed like when they are giving you responses and sometimes you might not get that your response instantly. You might take them to go and think about it and Come back to give you response. Yeah. But I, I feel that we should ask them, what do you like to learn? What do you like to learn? Or do you want um, certain activities? Do you do certain activities because others are doing it or because you love it or you don't like it? So what are the activities that um, that you do that nobody forces you to do it? Nobody wants you to do it. And you're just so willing, and so you just so you're just so transparent enough to be open to to uh, to accept new knowledge about it. And you ask them, and they will be amazed because the first time I was asking my learners, and I was, I was like, what? Even when I was teaching them English, some of their minds are not even in English, just that it is needed for communication. Mm-hmm. But they are in another thing entirely. So you should ask them, what activities do you love most? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I actually do have to that. You know, I, I you, all the things boils down to every teacher, parent, outsider. Mm-hmm. I'm actually including parents because they are also teachers. Yeah. Okay, so 
and when, when we talk about education, they are one of the stakeholders in the mm-hmm. So, uh, please, I, I feel like, um, I feel like, like encouraging, that's what I'm saying. I feel like <laughs> okay, so the point is, are uh, these learners, uh, they, they, are think, they are people that God has created mm-hmm. them to be, he, he has wired them in that way, they have. So, even while you're asking those questions, there is also a part of you psychologically observing them. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So if you have a learner, okay, for instance, I have a learner in my cluster that um, uh, loves writing. I just observe that whatever she she has spent, she can even with your notes, the teacher's notes that is there, <laughs> she will just write and she doesn't even want to know it. And what is writing are things that are so, is it that she's copying back something mm-hmm. or she's writing new words that she has learned or then she's writing a sentence or something similar wow. to a story. And I feel like, okay, so yeah. why would I have to stop this kind of child from mm-hmm. writing? Yeah. This person wants to write. So it's observation. You know, it, 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 I can actually also be like, why are you writing people's notes then? You have the child to tell, tell the child to stop it, but mm-hmm. that is not it because that is this child's interest. That is the child's passion. Mm-hmm. So it also comes from observing the child. Mm-hmm. It yeah. also comes from observing the child. Mm-hmm. So you can ask so many questions. What is your dream? Mm-hmm. Or what, what, do you, what do you intend to be like? And it also depends on what you expose this child to. Exactly, exactly. It's part of the You know, there, there was a time that uh, there was a time that I followed some children for um a rural uh, learning and, and outreach like that. And then we have this child from one of those villages, and we are asking the child, "What do you want to be? Do you know what the child is like? And I want to be a taxi driver." Wow. And it it was so funny <laughs> because <laughs> I was I felt like really and because. That is what the child has been exposed to in that community, mm-hmm. in that yeah. environment. So it also tends to what you expose your child to. Mm-hmm. You will feel like you see that some child does like seeing things science. They just want to even when people are seeing cartoons on TV, they just want to mm-hmm. tune to where they show science, nature why, the Scott, you know, all those channels that talk about science. And then you just feel like this child is really, really interested in science. Why, really, like why not pattern this kind of? And mm-hmm. ask the child's questions. Do you wish to be a science person? Mm-hmm. Okay, what what part of science do you want? Yeah. You get do you want to ride a plane? Do you yeah. want to do physics? Do you want to be a physicist? Because everybody is not a doctor. Because everybody will become a doctor. Yeah. Imagine you have every child who wants to become, become a, a doctor. doctor. And I think <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine the whole world how it will look like. So then we now have we now have lawyers to take over from Kesley. Mm-hmm. We won't have um, teachers to even educate people who want to yeah. be a doctor. Then if you get to the point that we will have we will stop having doctors because there are no educators to take over. Exactly. So that that I, I feel like uh, those questions are also really important to ask. Very those important. are important questions to ask. So uh, <laughs> this this session has actually been so interesting. Very very really so, interesting. Um, I I also feel like um teachers parents they can also ask us okay. What impact would you like to leave in school's life? Yeah, and, and it, it actually, it actually makes them think critically and help them with their problem solving. Exactly. Because you feel like, okay, stop problem. What, what do I want to do? What impact do I want to make? Okay, child that uh, that wants to write, what impact do you want to make with your writing? writing? What kind of writing do you want to do? Are you do you want to enlighten people on writing about children, art, science? You get yeah. so uh, that that too. That, yeah. That was nice. So I just think that we should ask them because beyond all of this, being famous is not just the impact. It is services yes. to people. So you should ask them that. Okay, what impact do you want to make? On people's life with this career you are choosing, mm-hmm. because for them to choose, they should be able to craft out why they want to do it. And sometimes you you might need to come in in that part that okay, this thing that you have said and and you have seen them in that line that okay this person is working in this line. Then you can help the child spark a question and you see the way he or she will critically bring out solutions to all of those things. Uh, and um, I, I also feel like there are so there are important things to to actually ask mm-hmm. when a child is making choices. Why and how? Yeah. Then you, you 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 as a teacher you know you have to help this 
child to navigate the house mm -hmm. and then you know that you also to enlighten the child on when yeah when are you to accomplish this wow. this is time you're ready to for this as a mentor as a child goes on mm -hmm. and this and, and also as a parent I think the when is actually important because you know a child will not be under a teacher for long. Mm -hmm. So when when a child already have this understanding of when and then how should be something that is so solid. Yes. It should be a very solid so it's like you're setting a smart goal for your future. Yeah, and it should be so interesting. It's so it should be something like so solid. Why do I want to do this? Something that you know that even in ten years time they are telling you <laughs> why do you want to do yeah, this? You still know that I want to do this. This is because I want to do this. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you so much. So, in conclusion, I just want to say that um, every teacher um, out there should not see school as an authoritative society or a military zone. Because actually, we are putting all of these learners, these wonderful people, in a box. Hmm. Most times, with, with our actions, we are putting them in a box. I can't tell you that, oh, hey, you, see if you cannot read in, let me think for you, let me be your, your, your reading capa capacity. No, we are not trying to um, zone them, that like, stay in this lane. No, it's not an authoritative society or a military zone. Because you should allow every child to choose. Because they can choose, they know what they want, they know, they know, they know their passion, they know their life, they know their dislike. So allow them to choose. And like we said earlier, that we are not erasing the role of that okay, mentors and teachers. We are not saying that this should not work. You are there to guide them, but then allow these learners to because they have beautiful ideas or parents that when they start to to do what they want to do, they just to show and just okay, you are on your own, just go. Out. No. No, you're not you're not authoritative authoritative on them. Just allow them to choose and back them up and you see the beauty that, that will come out from all of this. That's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> so relieving and I feel like I just put out my mind to yeah. everything that's experience yeah. out there. Okay, so thank you for joining on today's episode thank of Rambo Talk. Ah, uh, it, it's been a sweet moment. Yeah, it's been a sweet moment. Okay. So thank you very very much. And um, we'd like to appreciate our team members. And um these people are so wonderful. Very yeah. wonderful. These people, people. <laughs> so we want to appreciate the person of Miss Blessing added on that. And that's our camera woman. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to represent uh, me uh, appreciate Miss Odun Ayo Aliu and we also appreciate Miss Volade Adinisobe, Mr. Ogweye, Mi Okwade, and then Mr. Femi Adekola. Thank you very much for being part of this. Thank team. you. We appreciate your help. Okay, so thank you. And please don't forget to follow our website, www.brambunetwork.org. And you can also follow us on every other social media angle, Brambu Network. It will be so nice to have you on board. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for joining and we will say bye. bye.